But the ones that don't talk, I'll be the one talking. I talk for three hours like I do myself. <laughs> I talk for three hours and, and you know, go through so much with this woman and then tell this woman how good she looks and how I believe you this or that and don't even know the woman. And they feel so into it. They feel so good about themselves to the point they want to give me the girls like that. You know what I'm saying? Just from talking on the phone. Just from talking, from talking on the phone. Just from talking. You want me to bring my son down here and he can let you know this? Because a lot of times I could be in the kitchen, you know, cooking, and, you know, he can be in the living room watching TV because he barely comes down and sit around me. You know, he mm-hmm. just like to roll out with me. But one day he was sitting down here and he over there, you know, giggling because the stuff I was saying is something he wasn't on the phone, you know? And what not? And, you know, I, I have been told, because I have heard, that letters that heard me conversating with women, you know, just being out, I have been told that, damn, man, if, if you talk that good, you must be getting a lot. But no, I don't want everybody out talking. You know, that's one thing about You, you, it. Don't. you I, don't. I I can play. I can be a player, but I ain't got to hit everything I've missed. You know, because some, some of that stuff you hit ain't going to be great. You know, so. <laughs> No, well, I, I think it, that it'll be like this. That, what, what you that, was, that was my sound effect. I'm sorry, y'all can't hear. But um, we can, yeah, an, we don't hear that. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, I gotta interrupt y'all right quick, cause I man, we got a special guest to join us in here. We got the governor of Sports Talk Minnesota, Vince, right in the building, and he gave me my own. Hey. He gave my own thing, so I'm gonna play his right now too. And hey, Sam Vince, right Sam Vince, while we playing with you, he's my show. Make sure you're listening on Wednesdays on SME. The Sports <laughs> Guy, Sports Done Right, SME. Three things that go great together. Yeah. So, everybody, and you're going to find this funny, man. Everybody has come up with a show for you, um, Chief. <laughs> they said it would be an awesome show to find uh, Chief of Love. So, we call it uh, Jersey in Georgia. I think that I think uh, <laughs> I think I think they said they'll set you up on a date downtown, three dates downtown Atlanta, and then you can ride the horse and carriages on Peace Street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, they said it's a good production. The first X Squad production video, a video podcast, a video series. Yeah, yeah. Of Chief finding the find the right love here in the city. Woo, man, that is funny. So anyway, you 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 willing to do that, Vern? You willing to be you willing to do that? Put yourself out there like that? Hey, I'm I'm putting it like this. Uh, we can do it, but it's up to the chief to, to make that final call as far as uh, the woman. You know what I'm saying? If she, if we go out there and do all that, and they spend their money on me doing that, you know, she better be the one that's you know from me. Because if she ain't, then um, it's just another episode of Chief going astray. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um let me see. So we said so I, I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. So 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 Vern, we've talked about a lot of different things in this hour and a half. I think we talked about an hour and a half or so. So what tell me if you had an ideal woman. Tell me uh-huh. what she what she give give a description of her. What does she look like? Who is she? I want you to give okay. details. I don't want you to just tell me she bad. I want you to tell me details of things yeah. that you like and the qualities that you're looking for okay. in a woman. And everybody in the chat, I want y'all to tell Vern if you think that his standards are too high. Because I said I didn't think so, but I want you to give me a, uh, give us a real detailed description of the type of woman you're looking for. Physical, okay. she, emotional, resp- whatever qualities you want to include. Okay. For one, she got to have her own natural hair. I don't care if you can't do it every day. I want your natural hair, baby. I want a person that you can look good with. You can good. Mm-hmm. You can look good without makeup. Not okay. saying I don't want you wearing it. Some people would like you know do that touch up. You know. With Dr. Makeup, you still look good, right? Okay. I'm a I'm a I'm a TNA man, right? Mm-hmm. I love TNA. You know, you know what I'm saying? For for okay. the for the uh, for the jury kids out there, that's titties and ass, right? Um, I don't care. I don't I don't care if a woman has a middle weight because you know I mean I'm up in age. I'm 56. 
I just sat back and got me a little gut stroke, you know what I'm saying, and whatnot, you know. But uh, uh, I want something to hold. You know, them okay. supermodel days is over with me. You know what I'm saying? No I bones. Can you ain't with no bones. And they can hold me back. Right, right. Okay. And uh, just just a real person. Like I said, make me happy. Make me laugh. Make me smile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like a woman that can cook even though I can cook. Because there's a lot of women from the South, especially here in Atlanta. Oh, I can cook. My grandma told me how to do this, how to do that. Let me tell you something, Andrew. If y'all gonna laugh on this one, right? I was I had a, a young lady over here for one Christmas, right? She's gonna mm-hmm. fix me and my son a dinner and everything, you know, and whatnot. Man, we ate that food. When I took her back home, we got to take a picture in the winter. When I took her back home and I came back, I told my son, listen, here, let's get this shit and let's march it out to the garbage can. But this not standing here no longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But y'all ate it though. No, I ain't much, baby. I sample. I had a red cake. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do the Thanksgiving type plate. I did a little of this, little of that, little of this. I sample. I passed it down. Wow. It went out to the garbage can. Went out and she's swapping down. She's swapping down after that. She was a good cook. And none of them good. None of it. Wow. None of now, it. Now I'll say and this. I'm, and I'm a man. Uh huh. I'll say this, of course. I'm I'm interjecting myself as her husband again right now. That's fine, right? Now <laughs> Ange- <laughs> Angela throws down in the kitchen, and she is from a family of people who throw down in the kitchen. So her sisters, some of her brothers, her mother, her grandmother. I mean. Mother, aunt, uh-uh. and grandmother own restaurants. So, yeah. I used to love wow. I used to love eating soul food around the city, but I never knew what good soul food was. I guess you know I knew what my family did, but I'd eat you know the beautiful and Piccadillys and all kind of stuff. Not to say that Piccadillys had soul food, but I used to eat all the different places because I liked a little good meal on Sunday. Well, my wife would shut down half the place. I don't eat half of the stuff that I used to because she, when it comes to soul food, that's all she grew up on. She has standards like, oh, no, nah, we ain't eating that. Nah, that is horrible. I don't know how you eat that, you know. I don't even know the last time I seen a, a Golden Corral or anything like that because when it comes to certain things like macaroni and cheese, fried chicken, collard greens, all that stuff, it has to have a certain standard. And we ain't walking in that spot if we don't have that standard. You know what I mean? So she knows good food, and that's and she makes the good food. I mean, there is no fried chicken like my wife's fried chicken and my mother-in-law's fried chicken wow. and my sister-in-law's fried chicken. I mean, they all have the same, pretty much close to the same chicken. But it's like a family chicken, man. Barbecuing, <laughs> frying, and all that stuff is A1 on point. I ain't going to lie. Vern, Vern, you see he got a bad, don't he? He got a bad for his girl. He got a yeah. real bad. Okay? We have, yeah, a real yeah. bad. we have a real bad for each other. We really do. Okay? But wow. back, to, <laughs> back thank you, babe. But back to that, I think that you know, people always, first of all, online, they portray to be something who, they portray to be people who they're not. They're not, they give right. their best self or a representative until you get to know the real them. That's what we call it, a representative. So you show them, they show you their representative at first until you really get uh-huh. to find out who they really are. And But you, what you learn is the complete opposite. So you go in a little bit different. <laughs> you go in with the real you, but you're still getting other people's representative. So maybe right. you need to try some of the shit that they trying, and you just put out a representative yeah. and let them show you who they are first. Yeah, I may get a six figure there huh? because let me tell you what my profile says: hardworking man, the life of the party, just love to have fun. That's what mine say. Mm. But it doesn't tell about. It doesn't say what you're looking for. It doesn't say what you like to do. It doesn't like. It doesn't say what you do in your free time. What about all those things that so people could actually figure out who you are and get to know you? What at the bottom that? is, at the bottom is, if you want to know more, ask me. Oh, okay. That's the conversation that you're talking about. Having that conversation right. to figure it out. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I'm not hard. I'm not hard asking. I'm just so a man don't... that. I ain't taking no any and everything, and I know BS when I see it. Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you think that you've ruled out any good prospects prematurely because of your high standards? Um, you know what I did, I think? You know what I really thought I did? Uh, I said about a good 20 women out of the 
Remember I told you early uh-huh. that I didn't go meet. When we talked on the phone. They love my conversation. They love to talk to me. They call me all the time. Mm-hmm. I think if I would have met some of those 20, maybe one of them I'd be hooked up with. But you know the reason I didn't go meet them? Uh, and it was because of my work schedule I had. You know, I was driving for the post office, you know, contractors, mm-hmm. and the yeah. hours I had. So when I came home, I was more into coming home, because, you know, on Sundays, I usually cook two, I was working like that, I usually cook two meats. So when I come home on Monday and Tuesday, I got to cook them for some vegetables or something, you yeah. know, to go with the meat that we had. So a lot of times, you know, I come home, you know, because I, I was getting up 10 to 2 in the morning. And wasn't getting home to about five thirty, quarter to six every day, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, when I came home, it was eating dinner, see what's going on in the house, look through the mail, and then I always had me a beer and a Hennessy. So that was my thing. And um, the only women I had back then was women that liked what they was doing. They come over to get service, and then they go home. They came you know? over and got. Wait, wait, you hear that? They came over and got what? <laughs> service. Service. <laughs> she said service. <laughs> you were servicing them. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's how I was. But, right, y'all, Angela, I don't want all that. You know why? Because, see, when you get up in age, and a lot of people out there, they talk that junk. That must be the ones taking the biases and all that. But when you get up in age, right, you got to uh-huh. start reserving. You got to start reserving yourself for that one special woman you want. But you got to be able to give that woman what she wants because she can still kick it. But see, a lot of times I run into... Uh, I'm 55. I, I, want, I run into women in their 30s and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So these women is highly sexual, sexual active, right? So if, if you meet one and you're going to make her your woman, you got to make sure you still got something in the tank. You know, so that's why I don't try to go out here. Lately, I've been selling down. I've been like, settle down, because if I find the one, I want her to be able to have me all the time the same way and a little different, you know? Okay. Yeah, because I don't want to, I want to, I want to take those pills, you know what I'm saying? Because if I take Viagra, the bleaches and all of them and whatnot, you know, they should be good where you're down at the well. Okay, I'll mess you up. <laughs> Wow. All right. So you say possibly. You possibly may have ruled out a couple of good ones because you just didn't have the time. Yeah. But, but you guys, yeah. this, is, this is the thing about me. Y'all really killed me with this, uh, about making time. You make time for the things that are important to you, and you prioritize. You make time for your show. You make time to do the things that you want to do. So, I mean, if that's important to you, you still have to be able to, while you're sitting down having your Hennessy in, a, in your beer, make a phone call. I mean, before you, you have your bigger, you have to prioritize things that are important to you, though. Know? Because I think that you really, this is me, I'm just analyzing you. I think that you really didn't do yeah. it because you have a backup. You have somebody when you're lonely. Oh, you yeah. And, and, and yeah. as long as you have that, that's not a priority to really get out there and do what you need to do because you got a little backup. You got you a little something. You know what I'm saying? But that so, keeps you from being that's why I cut it out. lonely. I, you're I cut the back out. I'm now I'm ready to find that one. I cut the back out, my quick. I, I, you know, real, I'm not doing that job. As of October 2015, I resigned from that truck driving job. So now I have a real simple job. I'm off on the weekends. I was working six days before. Now I have mm-hmm. a real simple job now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm just on, you know, with that mama. One day I'm going to be able to say, mama, I think I found that girl, you know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, because sometimes when you when you when you complacent and you good where you are, I mean you can't you don't move. You don't move to do the right thing when you comfortable where you are. And sometimes God has a, play, a way of moving us when we don't want to move. So you moved on your own so you can make way for somebody who will be ready for you. Right. You ain't got to explain to nobody. You ain't got nobody knocking right. on your door at 2 o'clock in the morning while you're with somebody who you really want to be with and not one of those mm-hmm. people that you are servicing. And you got to explain to this new girl, oh, she crazy or, you know what I'm saying, we used to kick it. You ain't got to do all that because it's been eliminated. And that's what women need to feel like, you know, they're comfortable with giving themselves to you if you got given 100% of yourself to them. And that's what right. people have to do. And I think that we're not comfortable. Everybody thinks somebody out to try to get them or get something from them or somebody going to do something to them. And People just not comfortable being open and being who they are and people accepting them. Hey, y'all keep that's talking. That's what makes right. it so hard. You know what? 
my ex needed to have talked to you before she left, because you were the...